Hey everyone, it's Heather with Tiller here. Today we're going to talk about how to get started with Tiller for Microsoft Excel and set up your foundation template for budgeting and cash flow tracking. Here on the console at sheets.tillerhq.com, I've already started my free trial and connected a few accounts to Tiller service. So now I'm ready to get started with Excel. I'm going to choose start with Microsoft Excel. This is going to download a copy of the foundation template for Excel onto my local computer. So I can go ahead and open up that copy of the foundation template. The first thing I want to do is save that Excel workbook to a location where I'm going to remember it and rename it. So I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to choose save as, and I'm going to choose to store it on my OneDrive so that I just have easy access to it from multiple computers. I prefer to store it there versus locally on the computer, but you can also just store it locally on your PC. So I'll click save here. Now I can see that the auto save is on, which is great. When you store to OneDrive, you get that auto save feature, which makes sure that you have some automated version history happening. The next step is that I'm going to want to install the Tiller Money Feeds add-in for Excel. So I can go to the insert menu here and all these steps are described here on the getting started tab as well. So I'm gonna go to the insert menu and I'm gonna choose my add-ins. I'm gonna go to store, search, Tiller money feeds, and then I'll go ahead and choose add and follow the prompts to install the add-in. Now I can access the Tiller money feeds add-in from the data ribbon. So I'll launch the Tiller money feeds add-in, and then it's going to prompt me to sign into Tiller. So I want to make sure that I choose the authentication provider, Google or Microsoft, based on the account I used to sign up for Tiller. So in this case, I signed up for Tiller using a Microsoft account. Next, I'm gonna choose that account. It's, it's either already signed in here or I can use another account if I used a different Microsoft account for my Tiller subscription. Once I'm signed in, I can go ahead and link the workbook to the Tiller service, which makes it available for connecting accounts and pulling that data into the spreadsheet. After I've linked the workbook, I can choose which accounts I would like to connect to the spreadsheet by clicking link accounts. And then I can choose the accounts that I would like to feed data into the spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna toggle on both of these accounts and then I'll click confirm. Now I can navigate over to my transaction sheet and then when I click the blue fill button here at the top, it's blue because it's letting me know that there's new data available to fill then I should see the transactions for those accounts make it into the spreadsheet and review the transactions for those accounts. You can see it brought in about 30 to 90 days worth of transaction data for both of these accounts. Now we're gonna talk through how to get the template set up for tracking and budgeting. So first spend some time on the category sheet here. This is where we give you an example list of categories, but you can customize this based on your unique needs. So let's say that I didn't really need a pets category, but I'd rather have something like coffee. So this is maybe also in the discretionary group instead of the living group. So think about the group as the bigger bucket. You can see here I have this discretionary group can easily sort the categories list by the group to kind of see all of my categories in the same group together on the category sheet. The group is the bigger bucket, the category is the more granular level. So all of these discretionary categories, they fall into the discretionary group. So every category should have a type, also assign income, expense, or transfer, and transfers are generally things like a credit card payment, so money moving between accounts. Once I've spent some time thinking about my categories here on the category sheet, I can head over to the transaction sheet and start categorizing transactions. So I can go through and use the drop down menu to categorize the transactions based on the intent of my spending. I can also type the category out in the cell here and as long as I spell it right it'll move down to the next row for me. This one might be groceries, also groceries. We don't automatically categorize transactions for you out of the box because we can't assume to know the intent of your spending. So we give you the power to come up with your own categories list and categorize based on the way that you are spending your money. 
you don't have to categorize all that historical data. You can just start with this week and go forward, this month and go forward. We do recommend that you categorize last month up to today if you're brand new to budgeting. So now that I've got all of this last month categorized, I can move on to the next step of setting my category budgets. So I'm gonna do that here on the category sheet and I can just set the budget in column E and it's gonna cascade out to the right for me. Let's say my cell phone bill was now $80. So I can see that that value updates across to the right for every month in this 12 month budget period. If I need to set a unique value for a specific category in a certain month, I can also do that too. So let's say for February, my auto and gas category needed to be something more like $400 to include my car insurance premium. So I'll just type in $400 into February for auto and gas and press enter. I'll then see the subsequent months update and I don't need every month after February to be that high. So I can just type over that next month 80 and it'll bring it back down to a normal level. So I've got the budget targets already set up in this demo budget here. So let's check out what happens when we set up the budgets and on the current month to see whether our plan makes sense or not. So I've selected March, that's the current month, and I can get a sense for where my money's going right away. So in the top left here, we have our planned cash flow versus our cash flow to date. So our planned cash flow is how much we would have left over if we spent as much as we plan to spend and earn as much as we plan to earn. Based on that plan, if everything goes according to our budget, we'll have $1,412 left over. So far, our cash flow to date is a little bit higher than that. This is all based on our actuals, how much we've actually spent and how much we've actually earned. Keep in mind that this amount is gonna move around a lot during the month, and so it's actually most helpful when the month closes. In the middle, we get our spending budget versus our spending actual, and how much of our expense budget is still available and how many days are left in the period. 20% of our $2,588 budget is still available based on what we've already spent so far. And then on the right, we get our income budget versus our income actual. We can scroll down in the monthly budget sheet to see where we're overspending or if we have any available. So for example, we can see that we have overspent in the miscellaneous category as well as the pharmacy category. So use the monthly budget to check in during the month to see how you're doing against your budget targets. You can also use the actuals to help you understand whether or not your budget targets are realistic and modify them as needed on the category sheet. The yearly budget gives us a big picture view of our finances for the entire 12 month budgeting period. So based on our plan, what we've set up the budgets in the category sheet we would have $16,624 left over after the end of this year if everything goes according to plan. Our actual cash flow, this is the year to date cash flow based on what we've actually spent and what we've actually earned. We can also use the yearly budget to understand what different scenarios are going to do to our year. We can see that the February budgeted cash flow is a little bit less than that of January and less than that of March. And that's because of that car insurance payment that was due in the month of February. So use the yearly budget sheet to help you understand what different life events might do to your year ahead. If you're planning an increase or decrease in income, you can see what that's gonna do to your year. This is how you can really gain that clarity about where your money's going at the big picture level. The balances sheet is where we can review our account balances for any accounts that we have linked to the sheet. If we'd like to customize this a bit, we can go to the account sheet, select an account, and then apply a group to that account to change how it appears on the balances sheet. So let's say this was checking accounts and this was credit cards. Now when we review the balances, we can see that they're organized by the checking group and the credit cards group rather than ungrouped asset or ungrouped liabilities. So the balances sheet is a way we can keep track and get a simple net worth calculation based on accounts that are linked to this sheet. So you've got the basics. You've set up your categories here on the category sheet and you've defined your budgets on the category sheet as well. You've categorized transactions here on the transaction sheet and you've checked in on your monthly and yearly budgets. The main thing to remember is just to open the Tiller Money Feeds add-in here from the data ribbon, make sure you click that fill button to keep your sheet fresh with data. If you ever need help, you can always reach us via the messenger tool here in the bottom right of the add-in. 
You can also find it here on the console in the bottom right. Feel free to send us a message if you need help.